sailing truly. I'm Ian Wiley. Join me in my disability sailing adventure as I circumnavigate the UK and Ireland solo over two seasons. I'm raising funds for the Andrew Castle Foundation, the sailing charity helping disabled sailors reach maximum independence on the water. Join me on this voyage in pursuit of hope, equality and recovery. Welcome back to Sailing Trilene. Um The boat is in a complete disaster state at the moment and I'm incredibly happy. Uh, <laughs> What's happened is that I started putting a new hatch onto the uh, head's locker and this is the other side, not the side I was working on over the winter and I realised that the only real solution here was to strip out the whole locker and then I was going to be able to paint and do a proper job. So yeah, that's going on at the moment. I've got the first fill on the walls, uh, on the bulkheads and I'm just drawing up the... Uh, locker door sketches in Fusion. So my hope is that uh, this will be a really nice solution and also it will be a proper set of drawings which will be a good start for me getting back into um, using some proper parametric drawing software. Um, so that's that's also really good because it's good practice and I think when I do more work on a boat it's definitely going to be something that I need. So just to orientate you, when I took the veneers off I found that there were lots of gouges in the wood, for example this one where wires have been run and there were some voids as well where you can see um, the first level of fill going on. This um, wooden panel here is what's going to secure the actual locker front on and although it is softwood it's um, reinforced with glass fibre and this vast aperture which you're going to see a lot of is where the sink was and I've pulled that out so that I can get some medium density filler onto the surface and finish up that way so it's going to be a nice tidy plain surface. I really dislike silicon caulking in um, boats it just comes off so what I've done here instead is put in a fillet um, with some low density filler which will ensure that the water can't get down there. So I have been sanding and filling and filling and sanding and it's been quite difficult to film up there because one it's very small and two uh, the other problem has been that I had to take the lighting out to get access to you know the walls and stuff the bulkheads so it's only now that I've got some LED lighting back in there which means that it's actually possible for the camera to see anything. So that's the last bit of machine sanding for this project I think. It's not perfect inside the locker but short of some air tools and some soda blasting I don't think I'm going to get it perfect. Now on a small boat like Trilene this is a 125mm um, power sander. The advantage of the 125 is that you can get into smaller radiuses and on a boat like this um, that's really really important. In fact I'd love to go down to a um, 50 mil but the only practical ones of those are, are air tool powered and um, that's not a step I can go to just yet. It's really not worth trying to extend the life of sanding pads when they get clogged or torn around the edges these ones came up against the fitting uh, just you have to just ditch them um, and this one's clogged with filler um, this one's doing all right actually because it's doing what it's meant to be doing which is sanding wood but um, if I was carrying on I would be ditching that one fairly quickly too. So having finished the sanding on this job, uh, the machine sanding anyway, I am taking a very quick break. I always have this debate for my, with myself which is how much more of this sanding or grinding or crouching in a hole can my body take and still be functional tomorrow? And Having a disability means that the answer is usually quite a lot less than a professional boat builder or even, um, dare I say it, another fancy vlogger on YouTube. But I have to make that call because if I end up non-functional tomorrow then I've just wasted uh, more than a day essentially and the whole project gets stretched, everything goes right. So it's much better to conserve my energy, take little breaks and then keep going even if it's only at a rate of three hours a day because that's better than being wiped out for 12, 24, 48 hours and losing all those hours that you might have been productive. It also makes you feel pretty rubbish and that's not something that you want to do really.
one of the things that it's really easy to get into the habit of on a boat is getting into sequential activity where you do thing A and then you do thing B and then you do thing C. In this case I wanted to make sure that I was putting on the paint for the locker fronts at the same time as I was painting the actual locker innards. Uh, so that's more like concurrent activity. So what you can see here is dry building the locker front, um, marking out the um, holes where the bolts are going to go through and those bolts uh, needed to be over drilled so that they would have resin cores going through them so that when the locker front comes off the bolt holes don't get sequentially looser in the plywood so this is me drilling with a forstner bit which is a flat ended bit drilling through the um, plywood to create nice pockets I can fill with epoxy and then drill to the right size to take the uh, bolts and it's really important with plywood like this that you want to drill the Fosner holes from one side and then flip it over and um, drill them from the other side because otherwise you'll get really nasty tear out which um, is uh, um, not a fun thing to deal with in the filling and sanding process. The other thing that I was doing was pre-drilling all the uh, hinge holes and marking those out properly. It sometimes feels a bit dispiriting to be building everything up in bare ply and dry fitting it and then taking it apart again. Um, but I have to say that in the end it works out to be much faster than um, trying to guess what it's going to be like or even drawing it up and then um, hoping against hope that when you've painted all the parts and made everything perfectly it actually all goes together the way you expected it does because in a boat nothing quite works like that and um, having things like hinge holes pre-drilled really does prevent me at least messing up the nicely finished or at least what I hope will be nicely finished painted surfaces. And here's the update uh, we have finally got to the point where paint is going onto the bulkheads and top surface of the uh, head compartment which is just fantastic I'm so relieved it's been such a long fight to get ready and it's just such a relief to be able to get to the point where <laughs> there's actually paint going on and I'm using the international yacht paint system top lac so there's a primer undercoat called one up that's going on first and that's working out really really well and the other thing that's arrived is this which is a I think I'm hoping I haven't opened it so let's have a look Yeah, it's one of the legendary Stanley um, thermos flasks. My old and battered 1.2 litre flask has bitten the dust. It's no longer holding vacuum, so it's not keeping the water hot, which is a, a real problem for me. This is a way that I cut down on my gas usage. So every time I boil the kettle, I boil it full and I fill up the flask and then I use the flask to make tea and stuff from. And that is a way of uh, just conserving the the energy that I'm using on board which is really important because getting hold of gas as you may have learned from some of my previous videos is quite tricky sometimes and especially at the moment with the uncertainty about the provision of color gas and uh, I've switched over to flow gas but they're not so widely available it's not in all the sort of marinas and harbors so it entails a slightly longer journey to go and get a new cylinder so this paint is insanely fixotropic um, fixotropy is a property whereby um, things that are kind of really glutinous become much thinner when you agitate them and this um, one up primer undercoat stuff from yacht paints international yacht paints it's just it's insane how um, how thick it is when it comes out of the tin so you really have to stir it for a good long time to get to a paint quality which you can apply sensibly um, and yes I am using a pencil to um, stir the paint but I will wipe it off afterwards and these are not my navigation pencils they're carpentry pencils I know that if I'd been able to get hold of any blue one up I would have interleaved the colours so that I would mix a bit of blue in so it's really obvious where the next coat goes on you can overcoat blue and white one up with 
white top coat so it's not like it's causing a problem and I wouldn't put the blue on the I've just put a bit of blue in so that you can actually see where the next coat goes on because that makes everything a bit easier although with the light as it is now it's not too much of a problem Welcome to Groundhog Day on the Good Ship Trilleen. This morning you will be unsurprised to hear that I am once again painting and painting and painting and that is the way life goes at the moment. I may also be trying to do some other things in between painting but primarily I am painting because that is my life now and well apparently that's what I enjoy. So yeah. So top black is much less fixotropic, it comes out of the tin pretty liquid but there are still quite a lot of sediments in the bottom that it's very much worth getting out if you can. So as before I'm going to open with a brush into the edges and then we'll go from there. The thing about painting boats is that it's a real activity where you can be sure that your sins will find you out and um, very often they don't find you out for some years but they will find you out and so I'm trying to do quite a careful job here because actually um, I'd really like this to last for a while and I don't particularly like doing shoddy jobs um, on, on areas in the boat if I can avoid it This shoddy jobs are not my middle name, although I suppose at times they have been. And the problem with doing nice jobs is that it does take an awfully long time, but if you don't, the job looks at you in the face and goes, you botched me for the rest of your time. So it's generally better experience psychologically if you can do a nice job first time last time I had the sink out was when I was working on the plumbing underneath the hatch and I had some problems getting the sink to stick down so what I'm doing here is mixing up some um, resin with a mixture of silica and low density filler actually that's microlite filler so I'm mixing up to a really nice peanut butter style consistency and I'm then going to use that to backfill the large void under the rim of the sink that was really really difficult to get the sink to actually attach to anything so I'm hoping that by filling that flat and then sanding it I can use an adhesive sealant like Seekerflex 291i or 3M 4200 to um, fix the sink down and make it sure it's waterproof. Some of the other things that I've been doing are getting ready to run the electrical cables up forward in the heads because one of the things that I'm planning to do is to run a main um, line from the, the low power switchboard up to another switching panel in the heads. Uh, correction, not a switching panel, a fuse box so that the lighting in the heads will then have its own independent set of fuses and um, won't be so complex to uh, extend because what I did last time was I did something that was perfectly safe but I don't want to end up in a situation where I'm teeing into cables repeatedly. I'd much rather have a set of higher capacity low voltage lines going forwards and then some fuses and then a series of lower capacity lines going out to the um, constituent um, service lighting services. Now I have to try and get this cable into a sheath because you want to kind of try and keep, I mean this isn't so much protective, although it is protective a bit, it's more about um, making sure that the it's more about making sure that the cable is going to stay together because these are obviously two conductors in a single loom and you want to make it really obvious even though it will all be labeled you want to make it really obvious to future in um, 
potentially in a wet cold anchorage somewhere as to what these cables are actually doing. I think it's fair to say that when I inherited Trelina I unintentionally reincorporated various bits of bad practice. So you see these kind of ducticles here, I don't really know what to call them, um, apart from screw ups. These were where the cables were run through when I bought Trelina and I kind of filed them off a bit and kept going and ran some new cables through there. But frankly, it's entirely inappropriate to run cables through a space like that. So the thing that I'm about to do now is I'm about to drill a proper, proper hole for some proper conduit to go in there. Because that is terrifying me really. And um, you know, I know that now. So um, I suppose that's a, a good thing, right? With fairly pure and undiluted passion, I hate having the headlining down. It's um, such a cumbersome arrangement to make something happen like this. And frankly, I would rather have the cable exposed and running along in a nice cable tray. Um, obviously, that's not a conventional choice in a yacht, but um, it's incredibly frustrating when it's like this because every time you need to alter something you have to pull the cable tray down not the cable tray but the headlining down i think it's an american standard that talks about cables like this being supported every 18 inches I'm not strictly sure, I have to say, but it seems like a very sensible number to me. And that's in part to allow for failures in supports. Like that, for example. Well, that was not as bad as I feared. We've got the new cabling for the spur to the heads which will have its own switch panel up there um, we've got that plumbed in 99% of the way and um, I can put the head lining back up now which is as you probably will have worked out one of my most favorite jobs on Trilene but there you go thanks for viewing if you haven't already subscribed to the channel I would really appreciate it if you could click that button it makes a huge difference to the growth of the channel and it will help more people hear about the great things that sailing can do for disabled people.